and welcome to Mando Bug Crafts episode 75. What's up everybody? My name is Amanda, but you may know me as Mando Bug on the internet. This is my crafty podcast channel here on YouTube where I talk about the things that I am making. I'm coming to you from Buckley, Washington, where I live with my husband and two kids. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about embroidery, crochet, and knitting. So, starting the show out with something I've learned. This week, I learned how to do the bullion loop knot. So that is this embroidery stitch that you see in this variegated blue thread. It's a really fun stitch where you wrap the yarn, not the yarn, the thread around your needle, um, in this case, uh, 24 times before you secure the stitch back in place and pull everything tight. So think of a French knot, kind of, except over wrapping 24 times instead of just once. So it is a little tricky, but as long as you have the tools that are recommended, it's not too bad. Um, it's just a little fiddly at first, and then once you figure out how to keep a nice even tension, you're good to go. So I'm following the Sue Spargo pattern, and she recommends using, let's see, can you even see this? A milliner number one needle, and this is a super long needle with a nice sharp tip and a reinforced eye. And that way I was able to wrap around the, the, the needle 24 times without running out of room. So uh, I've really been enjoying using um, this as a needle that she sells. And uh, so as far as the project, whereas I'm looking for the pattern, I am sewing the Sue Spargo swag bag. And you can see I was very much inspired by her colorway when I chose the fabric to make mine. So it's definitely still in the blue-green family. Uh, I did change the body of the bag. She uses a 100% wool. I just grabbed a linen fabric. And I've appliqued my circles together. I've appliqued them down to the bag. I, now I'm starting my embellishment stitches. So I did a running stitch along the top here and along the side which is what she recommends in the pattern and now I've started my bullion loop knots around the first ring and then around the second and third rings there's going to be just plain bullion stitches not the loop knots just a bullion knot so um, I've been enjoying the hand stitching break because uh, normally you know I'm doing a lot of knitting, a lot of crocheting, so it was nice to kind of give my hands a break from those motions and do something else like stitching, and I think this is going to be a really fun bag. I am using Sue Spargo's thread for the decorative stitches. I have her, let's see, it's the wrong side. I have her Eleganza Pearl Number no. 5 in EZM 18 which is this blue variegated, which is what I've been doing the bullion loop knots with. And then I also have Easy M12, which is this variegated green, which I did my running stitches in, and I will be doing some bullion knots with also later. This one doesn't have as much of a contrast to it. It looks pretty high contrast in here, but the color changes are longer. And so I thought I was going to see more variegation in my running stitches than I actually did. To me, that all kind of looks like a semi-solid. So that was a bit surprising. But I'm still pretty happy with the results. Uh, it's hard to say what it's going to look like until it's completely finished. So, um, I don't know, it's something I've been having fun with. Uh, so moving right into works in progress, this project I don't think that I'm going to show you guys to show you guys to show it to you guys when it's finished because I'm trying to get it out of here today. This is the unicorn blanket that I showed you guys last week. I've got the horn and ears sewed down. I thickened up the mane a little bit, and I've added tassels down one side. And so I just have to add tassels down the last side, and we're done. So I really wanted to have this done by now, but um, I got hung up sewing down the horn and the ears. I just was not happy with the, the way the ears turned out. So there are pay-for patterns. There are free patterns for this type of a blanket. I was like, you know what? It looks pretty simple. I'll just wing it. 
shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so these ears, I they were way too long. So I did a running stitch along the outer edge of the ear and pulled it tight to kind of pucker them down, give them some shape. Now I do wish they were a little more pointed, but I think I think this will be okay. I'll put it on, but I have a feeling it might not be in frame. Also, it's for a five-year-old, so the hood doesn't quite fit me. It's just a little too shallow for my head. And I'm partially worried, let's say hunch over, you can see it. I'm partially worried it'll be too shallow for even a five-year-old's head. So I've been contemplating whether I'm going to go back in and add another row or two just to kind of bring the hood forward just just a little bit more. But I, I haven't decided for sure because you can pull the hood forward more as long as you keep the blanket wrapped up above your shoulders. So it really just depends. Um, I think I should have had the mane a little thinner but I was trying to give it some you know thicker appearance. I mean there's nothing worse than like a raggly looking is that hair kind of mane so I just kind of got carried away adding more and more and I think I may have gone too too wide here but I don't think a five-year-old is gonna scrutinize this as much as I have been so I think I need to just let it go I think she's gonna be happy to have a unicorn hooded blanket <laughs> So moving on to other works in progress, I knit a lot on my starting point. So this is the starting point by Hohi. It is a pay for pattern and it is gorgeous and I can't stop knitting it. <laughs> so I think I was somewhere down here when I shared this last week and I've just put stripe after stripe after stripe in. And I think once I get done with this variegated color, I'll be into some lacy sections. So it's been a lot of fun watching the colors change and that's what keeps me knitting it is, you know, it's like, oh, just a couple more rows and I'll get to the eyelet and just a couple more rows I'll be to the next color. So it keeps things interesting even though it's a, a relatively simple repeat, at least at this point. Uh, so I am using a variety of colors for this pattern. The white is birch gray in Madeline Tosh Twish twist. This variegated purple is Hedgehog Sock in Vengeance. This is Hedgehog Sock in Copper Penny. This is Madeline Tosh Twist in Leopard. And this row I'm working on now is Penguin Soup Royal MCN in White Fall. And you know this Madeline Tosh Twist, I don't know where I put the tag for that and I don't remember if it's called Twist Light. Or just twist. It's the fingering, it's the plied fingering weight that they have. But I've really, really been enjoying knitting on this because I just, you know, what's gonna come next? What's gonna come next? Which is good because once I finish this, I have to duplicate it again. It's quite a bit of work that's gonna be duplicated. But um, I think I'm gonna love it when it's done. Uh, I also cast on a new project. This is going to be a hat for my daughter Emily and the sun has come out. So I'm hoping that doesn't blow this out too much because this is a very soft oatmeal color. Wow, that's like super blown out. Thanks sun, can you go behind the clouds again please? Um, so this is, oh and I don't have the ball band in here. This is Haiku Kensington which is a, a lovely blend of oh Marina, Alpaca, Angora nylon and silk. I hope that's right. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. It's It's got quite a bit in here. It is the big sister to Kinsey. I'm knitting that giant blanket cape out of Kinsey. So this is just the, the thicker, more Aaron chunky weight version um, Kensington. And I've just started an antler hat for her. My daughter is just a hat fiend. She can't get enough of hats. And unfortunately, she loses a lot of hats too. I made this really cute crochet variegated hat for her and can't find it for the life of me. So I'm just gonna keep making her hats and trying not to lose them, but she absolutely loves them. And the antler hat, I've had it in my queue for a while. I've been wanting to knit it. And I just, I saw this yarn knit up into a smocking stitch 
and I just really loved the definition that it was giving so I thought you know this would be perfect for a cabled hat and it's a very um, neutral color so it will match almost anything she wears because sometimes her hats that I make her are wild colors and she picks a wild outfit and she runs around looking like a homeless person I mean she really does <laughs> so I thought maybe if I have a neutral hat it will tone down the crazy mis mis mismatched outfits that she puts together because the, the other day she had a Hello Kitty long sleeve shirt on with like shorts and it just every time I see long sleeve with shorts it just that doesn't make sense is it hot or is it cold <laughs> so uh, but you know I'm letting her dress herself and she's having fun with it so maybe if I just give her a better variety of options to choose from she won't look so strange or homeless. <laughs> I've also been working on my Vegas top so I have picked that back up again. Um, let's see, I want to dig it out. I'm working on another of these elongated diamonds in blue. So so far I've only been working with the Vegas yarn because the way that the design is in my mind I have to complete all these elongated diamonds before I can start the top it's gonna be a bottom-up top and I need to connect all these so they need to all be created um, so this is Vegas it comes in a cone I used the pink and purple in the unicorn blanket for the main I ran out for the body uh, well I ran out of one cone of purple for those tassels and so I decided to keep the sparkle out of the tassels and so I could save it for this Vegas top design. Uh, so I've got just a little bit of this blue one, but I've made quite a few others. So I think last I showed you I had one and a half purple. Now I have two more in pink and then I'm starting this blue. So far I've made two in each color because I'm trying to make our two tops at the same time. So I'm making one for myself and one for my cousin Annie who this top is inspired by. I went and visited her in Vegas so this is a top for her made using our Vegas yarn with a Vegas inspired design. And um, so so far been a lot of fun to work with the sparkle yarn it's so sparkly but I'm not sure if I'm gonna need to get more colors or what I don't think I want to have the front match the back which would be two in each color for one top I think I want to have every single elongated diamond be a different color which means I'll have to go pick up some more colors I have a softer turquoisey color but I don't think it really goes with these colors and the theme I'm thinking like a nice emerald green I have a gold that will work as well um, but it may end up that I have to repeat the front and the back we'll see but for now I'm just gonna keep doing two of each color and see where I get because I, I haven't even done the math or anything for how many I need for each top I'm mine is going to be probably about two sizes smaller than Annie's so she will probably need more diamonds than mine anyways so maybe it will be best to repeat colors for the front and the back I won't know until we get there um, I will be mixing this with Kobasi when the time comes so it's gonna be mostly a black tank top with this Vegas glitter accent so I'm excited to get here because Kobasi is such a nice soft base it's a cotton bamboo silk blend but uh, I gotta I gotta make the Vegas first the, the Vegas triangles um, so this is a design that I'm working on and I'm crocheting it using a 2.5 millimeter crochet hook and that's it for my works in progress so moving on to current events well I guess this is a work in progress for a current event <laughs> so I've mentioned before that I work at Makers Mercantile which is my LYS and they are hosting a knit along um, doing the Lorelei shawl which is a really pretty two color shawl that fades from like one solid color of garter it meets in the middle to do like a mosaic looking um, stitch pattern with two colors and then you end with that second color with a nice lace border so I am modifying 
the colors for mine. I'm going to knit the pattern the way that it was intended. So this is what I've got so far. I've cast on for the garter section. And it's a very, like, swoopy, swoopy shape. <laughs> Pretty sure swoopy is the technical term. <laughs> But uh, this is Schmutzarella Yarns in Cheese Balls, and then I'm going to be bringing in Edith, which is the variegated sparkly orange. Well, no, it's not variegated. It's more of a semi-solid tonal. And then a white fine height. So for the knit along, um, it, we're using one skein of Schmutzarella and one skein of fine height, but I'm modifying to use two skeins of Schmutz and one fine height. So um, that just kicked off yesterday, so I just cast on and got my couple little rows. The pattern calls for a US 4 or 5, and I normally go down in needle size because I'm a loose knitter, but I just, I was like, that just doesn't sound right for a nice drapey shawl. So I actually went up to sixes, and I'm I'm happy with the drape. I'm, it's not see th well, it's kind of see through, but I'm happy with the drape. Um, it's not tight or dense. Uh, I just don't really care for tight and dense uh, shawls or scarves. Uh, it's not my style. Sweater, fine. Shawl, no thank you. So I've been enjoying working on that. I, so I know the knit along started yesterday, but I don't remember how long it goes for. I want to say a month, but don't quote me. <laughs> I think there's more details in the Makers Mercantile Ravelry group about that. Um, and then the other current of it is the giveaway, right? So I am giving away this skein of yarn or a project bag depending on what the winner chooses. So I took the names from the comments on the last week's YouTube video and I put them in an Excel spreadsheet with numbers next to them in the order they were received and I did a number a random number dot org one and there were 11 entries so 1 through 11 random the winner was number 5 which was Crafty Mystic which was her name on YouTube but I also believe that's her name on Ravelry so congratulations this is yours or a project bag just contact me either on Ravelry or my email mandobugcrafts at gmail.com and we can coordinate um, your address and whether you want the yarn or a project bag so yay congratulations and everyone's comments about my podiversary is so sweet thank you guys so much um, it's been a lot of fun, and I really appreciate those of you that have stuck around from the beginning. That's crazy, especially because I had quite a long hiatus there when I was living with my dad. Um, there just wasn't the space to record, nor did I have access to my crafting supplies, so there wasn't a lot of crafting either. Uh, so I really appreciate that. Um, you guys are so sweet. <laughs> All right, moving on to check it out. Uh, so this week I was testing a pattern for someone at work who's writing a pattern and I was like having issues with the numbers. We were both like, what, something's wrong, what's going on with the numbers? So I sat down with a marker and I, I drew a chart for the beginning of the pattern. I'm like, I need to see visually what's going on, what is happening, and so I just, you know, started drawing a chart for it and it helped tremendously now the numbers are right we're good to go um, but another co-worker saw what I had drawn out and they're like do you know about stitch maps and I was like no what, what is that <laughs> they're like well we don't know if you can use it for crochet but it's really helpful for knitting so if you haven't seen you can go to stitchmaps.com and I don't know if it's a pay for or um, free product, kind of like Stitch Fiddles Free, but basically it helps you s visually see a stitch map. Sometimes with knitting you can see a chart, but it doesn't really show those two stitches becoming one. It's kind of just like you lose blocks. You know what I'm talking If you've ever followed a knitted chart that has got decreases or increases and decreases, you're, you'll know what I talk what I'm talking about. But the stitch maps shows you exactly a chart of the stitches. It's kind of like the knitted version of a crochet chart. Um, so I know, I've looked at the website, I know that you can use it for knitting and it's very helpful for designers and figuring out um, 
what exactly the stitch is doing and where and how. And I haven't actually used it yet, but I just thought it was really cool and wanted to share it with you guys. Um, so I don't know if it does crochet, which is what I would have needed it for. Uh, but then also I got the tip that if in the future I want to draw out a crochet chart to use graph paper because you can draw each symbol in each square and everything will line up nice and neat which is it would have been helpful because there were some there were corners and when I was drawing the corner <laughs> somehow I drew it bigger than the rest of the stitches so it was it wasn't a very nice and even drawing but it did the job it, it, it helped us with the numbers we're good but I did want to share that with you guys so moving on to let's chat um, there hasn't been a lot going on for me this week uh, mostly just you know being a mom and school and work so um, what I have to talk about is mostly just crafting because that's mostly what's been on my mind um, and as you can tell with all my works in progress it's mostly what I've been doing uh, outside of you know the boring stuff that I don't want to do but um, so this next week, by the time I record again, I am going to be exploring uh, so doing some shibori dyeing. So I'm really excited about that. You, It's kind of like a mix between embroidery and tie-dye. So I've been watching videos, watching videos, and I'm really excited to play around with that. So that will be happening this week. And then also, the more I see the amazing photo shoot that Stephen West did for his new mystery knit along uh, shawl, the speckle and pop, the more I'm like, ah, I think that needs to happen. I think it needs to happen. The only thing holding me back is I'm trying not to buy more yarn, but I would need more yarn to make it because I have a mini skein set, which I can show you, but there's going to be crinkling. So this is really hard to see because this right here is blown out, but it helps for me to blow it out for you to see what it actually looks like. It looks like black. But it's really black colors. So this is a mini skein set that I got from Nitty and Color called Goth Garden Mini Skeins. And I'm thinking I need a speckle and goth, right? That needs to happen, right? So the mystery shawl calls for three main colors that are gonna fade into each other, and then five mini skein pops. Um, and, you know, Stephen West likes his pop of color, right? So I was looking at the kits on his um, yarn store's website that he's got available for this mystery. And a lot of them are kind of a neutrally fade with five bright color pops. But I feel like, wouldn't it be nice to do, like, almost a grayscale fade? Like a white to darkerish gray, but of course speckly with the goth pop, speckle, and goth. I, I think this needs to happen. <laughs> so really, like that's what my week has been like, just thinking about these things. Um, I don't have any kombucha today. I'm drinking coffee because I'm out of kombucha. Uh, now that Josh is drinking it with me, we run out before the next batch is ready to bottle. I should be bottling tomorrow, I believe. I still have to boil off um, and let the water sit and make my tea, so. It'll pro I'll probably bottle tomorrow night. But, yeah, um, that's all I have for you guys this week. Um, I hope this doesn't feel rushed. I had started recording, and then um, someone had come by, so I had to stop. And now it's like, oh, I have like 30 minutes before Josh has to go to work. Just enough time to record, uh, because the kids haven't been taking, uh, what do you call that? predictable naps. Some days Emily doesn't nap at all and Jack hasn't been napping well. So uh, I was like, if I don't record now, it's not going to happen. Other podcasters with children understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right, so this is just me blabbering. I'm going to go. Happy crafting. I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.